Beavis and Butthead wasn't meant for kids, but they probably watched it anyway because it was hilarious. But now that the children of the 90s have grown into adults, they should watch the show again to catch everything they missed the first time around. You can tell that Beavis and Butthead are metalheads because when a metal video comes onto the TV, they shout things like, this rules, while they headbang and play air guitar. And of course, Beavis is always wearing a Metallica t-shirt while Butthead rocks one for ACDC. As you're probably aware, these are both famous metal bands that even casual music fans are familiar with. But to an older viewer, it's clear that creator Mike Judge didn't just pick those two bands randomly. Early on in the show, Beavis is the more serious and demented of the two, generally wanting to cause destruction. It makes sense that he wears a Metallica shirt, as that band takes itself very seriously and is dedicated to a non-stop sonic assault. Butthead, however, just wants to have a good time, much like the Australian band behind party hits like You Shook Me All Night Long and TNT. And then there's Stuart, the nerd who emulates Beavis and Butthead and desperately wants to hang out with them. He just can't get it right though. He wears a shirt in support of Winger, a cheesy hair metal band nowhere near as legit as Metallica and ACDC. In other words, Winger is lame and so is Stuart. For a sizable chunk of the 90s, teenagers across the land imitated Beavis and Butthead's ridiculous laughs and catchphrases. There probably wasn't ever a single junior high lunch period without some kid pulling his shirt over his head, proclaiming himself the Great Cornholio, and yelling, I need TP for my bunghole. I am Cornholio! <laughs> I need TP for my bunghole! But looking back on the show with the wisdom and education afforded by adulthood, it's clear now that Beavis and Butthead's vernacular had no basis in reality. 90s kids delighted in calling each other bunghole as if it was a dirty word, but in fact it isn't, or at least it didn't used to be. While Beavis and Butthead may have made bunghole synonymous with another kind of hole, it turns out that it's actually just the name for an opening in a barrel. One of the most frequent targets of Beavis and Butthead shenanigans was their neighbor, Tom Anderson. Tom is a patriotic, conservative, beer-drinking guy. He likes to work with tools and mow his lawn. He gets easily upset, and he speaks in short sentences in a high-pitched Texas drawl. Does that sound familiar? It should, because Tom Anderson shares virtually the same appearance and speech patterns of a later, more famous cartoon character, Hank Hill on King of the Hill. That show, like Beavis and Butthead, was created by Mike Judge, who also voiced both Tom and Hank. Hank, like Tom, is a patriotic, conservative, beer-drinking, lawn and tool-obsessed guy. Even Tom's wife Marcy looks quite a bit like Hank's wife Peggy. The only difference is that while the Hills are middle-aged, the Andersons are well into their golden years. Beavis and Butthead's whole deal is that they're stupid. They enjoy stupid things, they do stupid things, they're barely functional at school and in society, and they never stop laughing their stupid laughs. But almost everybody can find their niche in this great big world, even those who are as stupid and seemingly useless as Beavis and Butthead. For them, their skill is music criticism, honed by countless hours of watching music videos. Even if they can't get the names of the musicians right, they know what they like and what they don't. Their attitude towards music could easily be applied towards all of life. Butthead once stated, I like stuff that's cool, and I don't like stuff that sucks. That may sound like a logic loop, but maybe it's really just a prompt for a challenging, philosophical conundrum. Do we like something because it's cool, or is it cool because we like it? Is inherent quality non-existent, or at least irrelevant, because it's impossible to view things objectively, independent of our own perceptions and tastes? Beavis and Butthead really makes you think. Most TV shows are about something, insofar as they have a premise or a point. The Office, for example, mines humor out of the workplace, a near-universal experience for most adults. Modern Family, meanwhile, focuses on the home life of a group of relatives. But only Beavis and Butthead was audacious and transgressive enough to be about another aspect of the day that eats up a lot of time the act of watching TV. To get more specific, Beavis and Butthead was about two guys that sat around on a couch, channel surfing, and looking for stuff that was cool. That a TV show about watching TV could exist and even thrive is basically some kind of postmodern commentary on the degradation of culture and human interaction. At the same time, all those segments of Beavis and Butthead watching TV are a very subtle form of advertising. In the original series, all they viewed were music videos, which is essentially a constant directive to viewers to stay tuned to MTV. Whoa, my life was cool. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite shows are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.